An apocalypse of ice? Global warming is offering us a terrifying glimpse into our future. And despite its name, it's going to force us to survive in some unbearably cold conditions. This is how global warming is making us colder. It's December. Greg is getting ready to enjoy the holiday season amidst a usually chilly winter in Chicago, Illinois. Except when he turns on the TV, he's greeted with warnings about the most severe winter in over 100 years. Greg is a man who likes to be prepared, and so he puts on an extra vest before he leaves the house. It's not much use though, because once Greg exits his front door, he's greeted by temperatures cold enough to make the abominable snowman head for the nearest heater. An arctic chill has descended over North America. Greg does all he can to stay warm and safe. Inside his home, he's careful to ration his food. As outside, there's almost 10 feet of snow keeping him from venturing to the grocery store. Hundreds of people are admitted to hospital and treated for frostbite and hypothermia. Officially, Chicago is now colder than Antarctica. How did this happen? And has this ever happened before? In early 2019, much of the United States was essentially plunged into an ice age in the form of a severe cold air wave. Record-breaking low temperatures resulted in the deaths of many people and caused millions of dollars in damages. To the naked eye, it looked as though the Arctic had been picked up and dumped over the state of Michigan. And as wild as that sounds, it's actually somewhat similar to what really happened. The 2019 cold wave was caused by a concentration of Arctic air known as the Polar Vortex. The Polar Vortex is usually confined to where its name might suggest, inside the Arctic Circle. Yet, a weakened jet stream caused the air to move to a new region. Now, to better understand the Polar Vortex, imagine a gigantic circle of spinning air above the North Pole. This air spins at around 200 kilometers per hour. It's a kind of giant donut with extra frost ding. But sometimes, usually once every two years, the donut of neatly contained cold air stretches. Sudden stratospheric warming causes the vortex to change. As the jet stream weakens, the spin slows, and the cold air from inside the polar vortex is able to move to areas where it previously could not. This causes the weather in the areas underneath to change too. The weakened stream we've just described is once again allowing the air to fly south for the winter in our scenario. And Greg, like many others, is fighting not just to stay warm, but to stay alive. It's now been a week since the icy air settled over parts of the United States and Canada. Californians are swiftly swapping their surfboards for snowboards. Animals, like the neighborhood cats and dogs, are being made to endure weather typically reserved for polar bears and arctic foxes. Greg is worrying about where his next meal will come from, as the shelves in his pantry are emptying out. Essentially, Santa's airspace is occupying American skies. Greg is still snowed in, and even if he wasn't, authorities are alerting citizens in Chicago not to breathe when outside of their homes. The air is so cold, it can actually cause damage to a person's lungs. Many people in the city have died as a result of the unbearable temperatures. One of Greg's neighbors is even found frozen to death in the backyard. If you've ever heard the phrase, hell frozen over, it would probably look something like this. Respite is on the way though, because if global warming is the culprit here, the name suggests that things aren't going to remain icy cold for very long. Today, when we look at the average temperature in the Arctic, global warming, more appropriately known as climate change, is causing the number to rise. But the Arctic is actually warming at a much faster rate than other parts of the planet. And so when you look at the difference in the temperature in the Arctic to say, somewhere like say, Uganda or Kenya, countries that lie on the equator, the difference in temperatures is decreasing. Basically, the Arctic's climate is slowly getting closer to that of a tropical rainforest near the equator. The polar bears aren't going to need their sunglasses and suntan lotion just yet. But this is most certainly an alarming truth. 
And to make matters worse, it affects our polar vortex because the warmer temperatures mean the vortex is weaker. Weaker means more unstable, and it means that the cold air waves hitting the United States, particularly Greg's hometown, are more frequent as a result. So does this mean more snow in areas where these weather conditions are usually a rare occurrence? It certainly does! And we don't even need an incident involving Arctic air for this. This is because a warmer Earth evaporates more moisture into the atmosphere. All that water needs somewhere to go. And so when the temperature is warm, we put ourselves at risk of massive, devastating floods. But when the number on that thermostat plummets, we find ourselves snowed in thanks to unforgiving winter storms. As Greg shivers in front of his TV, hoping for the snowstorms to cease, he's alerted by a news broadcast letting him know that temperatures are about to soar by 80 degrees in just a few days. Perfect! It's the answer to Greg's and every other Chicago native's prayers. Except the thawing is just as destructive as the freezing. As temperatures rapidly increase, pipes burst, rivers overflow, roads, cities, towns, all flooded in a matter of days. The snow, frost, and ice needed somewhere to go after all. The weather shift occurs at breakneck pace, and Greg is left with little but a holiday season he will never forget. Colder winters being the result of global warming sounds strange, but even though we have the why right here, it remains a troubling subject. It also brings up a question you've likely heard before, one that Greg is now asking. How can global warming be real when we've just experienced an extremely cold winter? Global warming is actually a little misleading as far as names go. It's not quite a case of scientists playing a high-stakes game of catfish on an internet dating site. But the reason we now commonly leave that term aside for the more appropriate title of climate change is because global warming as a label tends to leave people believing that all it does is warm up our planet. What climate change really leads to is extra energy in the atmosphere. Energy that should regulate things like our weather and temperatures, and not just for us, for every living thing on Earth. This is why climate change is the single greatest threat that we as a planet are currently facing. And we only have ourselves to blame. We, the humans, yes, even you, Greg, are responsible for global warming, aka climate change. Right now, we are pumping over 10 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere each year. This is largely thanks to the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation. And since 1750, we have increased the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by as much as 50%. Carbon dioxide is a heat-trapping gas, and so with more of it in our atmosphere, we have what is known as the greenhouse effect, hot air trapped to hang in our atmosphere. While the most commonly cited changes in our climate are the steadily increasing temperatures, the effects of these changes are not always clear. In short, the world is getting warmer, not colder, thanks to the greenhouse gases. So what does this mean for Greg? It means warmer winters in the long run. A huge relief! Except this is not a good thing. Much of our planet will become inhabitable due to climate change, and for the next few decades, the risk and likelihood of more extreme winters will increase for all in North America. Greg is likely going to need more than that extra vest in order to survive next time. Thanks for watching, and if you don't want to feel left out in the cold, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. If you're interested in learning more about the dangers of climate change, check out this video about the long frozen viruses coming back from the dead thanks to a warming planet Earth. <laughs>